I was good. Everybody was like, why are you leaving? I said, because I got an early morning. I got things to do tomorrow. I got a long day tomorrow. And I didn't have, I didn't even have a drink. You didn't nobody buy you a drink? Nope. I, uh, I was good. And uh, I was happy. I was focused. I like that. I didn't even. Did I look at anybody? Oh, I didn't look at anybody. I really did. I didn't pay attention. That's good. Glad. I'm good. proud of you, Mike. I kept my ass home, too. Trying to save some money. And yesterday, I was actually working a lot. So I'm trying to do something different where I get a head start on all my weddings for the next month. Mm -hmm. I build the timelines. I build all, like, everything, everything, everything. And then I just have to make small changes when things get changed versus having to build it the last week. Cool, cool. Um, should we start? Yeah, let's, let's dive in. Let's dive in. <laughs> uh, are we belly flopping or are we like professional diving? What do you mean? Yeah, we're just gonna go. Or are we gonna be like. <laughs> we're gonna just do what we do. <laughs> I think we do more like. We're just gonna dive in. We're gonna talk about some fucking amazing things today about happiness and how we can be happy people happy people all right what's up y'all welcome to the one life podcast i am mr mic mike reed to my right as always is the lovely diana from social holic what is going on diana not much it's a great day it's not that hot outside which makes me very happy kind of reminds me of the, the same company weather that i love so much okay yeah, now you know what and i went to la early this morning um and it was overcast. It was like mm. 55 degrees, mm. which was a difference from yesterday because it Absolutely. was super hot. It was like 102 degrees <sighs> oh yesterday. My, God, my yeah. son almost died. Yeah, so it was crazy. It was crazy. Um, but this week has been sort of a roller coaster um, for me. Um, but you had a great week. Um, I want to say this. Um, congratulations again because I went to your... Um, Eventually events, Hacienda, Sunset at the Hacienda, mm -hmm. right? It was amazing. Thank you. I've never been to one of your big events, and um, I've always seen pictures and videos and all that. And this time I got to experience it, and I had an incredible time. Thank you. Hung out with you, hung out with your husband, hung out with all the vendors. And, yeah. like, I was telling somebody, I forgot, I was telling somebody there that um, everybody – in your circle that you've introduced me to has made me feel like welcome Good. out here. And that means a lot to me. Like, you know, like rent the um, Gabby, um, Nikki, mm -hmm. and a few other people, you know, I can't name everybody. So sorry. <laughs> Andreas, <laughs> but, Ernie. Oh yeah. Andreas is amazing. Oh, Andreas got me full that night. Um, he was trying <laughs> out his new, uh, rotisserie, rotisserie thing, um, that he brought out in his truck. Mm -hmm. And oh my God, it's amazing. I, I can't heard. wait to actually go have an actual dinner at Rio. Cause I haven't yet. I mean, I, I've been there a few times and, you know, cause we've done a few things over there and, you know, obviously I've it, eaten his food, but yeah, I haven't actually had a, like a sit down. Yeah. Dining sit down. A dining experience. And I, I'm actually looking forward to it now. Cause every meal that he's given me so far was just amazing. Right. I'm like, wow. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. So Andreas, I mean, everybody there, my boy, DJ crazy K was there, uh, DJ and, and, uh, it was just a great event. I think everybody was happy. Yeah, it was a lot of um, positive and good energy. Um, that's kind of what I like. Um, I was a little nervous. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to lie, I'm always nervous before an event. But I was extremely nervous for this one because it was the first time that the Hacienda kind of gave me the reins. Um, normally, they kind of control the majority of it. I just kind of throw my two cents of, like, how I would like it to look color wise mm. or decor or theme. But this time I actually got to plan it, coordinate it, um, do the floor plans for the vendors, get the vendors. Um, and it, it was an amazing turnout. It was an amazing group of vendors that we had, um, 34 vendors. And, you know, we bring the best of the best and that's what's was so amazing. And just to have it, it felt like a, like a family reunion, mm -hmm. 
Um, it didn't feel like a, a working event. It felt like just so much fun. And, you know, at the end, we definitely brought a little bit of fun to all the vendors that worked so hard to bring that event to be amazing. Um, we celebrated Julian's birthday. Um, and I think that's the biggest thing is, is turning friends into family. Mm -hmm. and, and you accomplished that. Thank you. I think you have. Um, even with, um, so this week we was um, filming, you know, some social holic stuff. Um, we was at uh, Fusion Movement with Raina. And uh, I said her name right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Raina. I be wanting to say Regina or something. Rena, Regina, Regina. Yeah. I don't know Raina. I'm, I'm, har I'm horrible at names. I, I already gave you guys that disclaimer. I'm horrible at names. <laughs> but um, even like Raina, every time I see her, um, she's just amazing. She's just ball this energy. ball of energy. Yeah. <laughs> and she always makes me feel welcome, though. Like, like we was at her studio and, you know, even at the, the event, your event. She always takes the time to stop, say hi, and have a conversation. I mean, it's just incredible. I, I just love that energy. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Um, very happy. Um, so I'm happy. Thank you for inviting me again. Thank you um, for helping me. I had him uh, on ladders. and <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, yeah, you know what? It's one of those things where you ask people, hey, you need any help? And, you know, it's kind of like a little thing. But, yeah, she had me out there <laughs> early in the morning. Well, you know, the event didn't start to 5 o'clock. And when I was like, hey, you need any help? She's like, yeah, I'm going to be at 1030. And I'm like, uh, <laughs> I'll be there around noon or something. But, yeah, you had me on lad ladders in the hot heat. But I enjoyed it, though. Um I, when I say I truly love helping people, like I do, I enjoyed helping you because it, it got me working with your staff that I've never met before. Um, and, you know, the, the young ladies that was out there, I forget their names, I told you I'm bad with names. <laughs> um, but they was all incredible, you know, very welcoming and polite and just, just had great energy. So right. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed being out there helping. Right. I didn't mind at all. You know, your husband was out there, Mike. Um, yeah. Me and him got <laughs> to hang out. Work. <laughs> Yeah, every, every time I saw Mike, though, he, it was like watching a kid at Costco's. Um, he, he he always had samples in his hand. Like, he went to <laughs> some vendor with either a drink or some food in his hand. It was hilarious. Yeah, <laughs> that's what he loves about those events. He's like, I'll be there. I'm like, are you helping? He's like, well, you go for <laughs> I'll the walk around for the food and the drinks. Yeah, he goes for the food and the drinks. I don't blame him because all the vendors, they had great stuff. Yeah, they did. They, they did. came out, they brought their best, showed up, showed off, and... Mm -hmm. We definitely had an amazing event. Um, the feedback's been amazing, so yeah, so I'm happy. And then I got to finally um, sit down with you and your husband, Carlos, and I, and yes. we had dinner at your house the other night, yes. and um, we had a great time. You guys uh, cook a mean barbecue, and Thank you. you did the rice and the beans. Yeah. I didn't have the beans, though. I'm always the sides girl, and he does the meats <clears throat> because I think he, he, does a, he does a really great job on that. Um, mm -hmm. But I like doing, like, salads and rices. Yeah. All that stuff. But no, so. just that whole night was amazing. Um, we had a great time. Got to listen to his music. Yep. I can't wait to let everybody hear it. Uh, so we, we just got to finish some things. And um, I'm ex actually excited about that. I'm, me too. I'm really excited. I, was, I, I know when I met him before, at, I think it was Rio. Uh, well, I think I met him before with that. But Adrano's for karaoke. But it was a different yeah, yeah. setting. Right, right, right. Yeah, the first time I met him, yeah. Well, this was a while back. But um, recently when uh, we was at Rio and um, he let me listen to some of his music. Mm -hmm. But this time he like really dove in it and I was listening to his phone outside. It was windy, so I really couldn't hear a lot. Mm -hmm. But I was really impressed the other night when I was at your home and it, it was really great. I was like, oh, wow. You can tell um, that's his passion. Yeah, you can tell. Like he gets this like this, this big grin mm -hmm. and he starts getting in his like, I can tell when he's in his mode. Um, with it and like where he kind of disappears even from like us talking like mm. you know you'll hear him in the office in the music banging because he's just kind of like he's in that mindset and um, I think it really got him excited that you know we're all kind of um, we get a little bit we're their biggest critic of our own work right, right? so right. I think that for a while you know he, it's been about a year since he's made another song so I feel like he's been in his head a lot and I think to have you guys there and really like just jamming with him I'm kind of got him pumped up again yeah I think so too and and I you know I had to sit down with him and told him that he actually has something um that he's should de definitely mix and master a lot of that stuff and put it out um you, you know because you just never know I mean there's a lot of people that's looking for stuff that man he, he has a lot of stuff that it's can, very trendy today and yeah. and very unique and he's he's really been he has all kinds of genres like you could get the the love making the jazz the hip-hop the just straight like you know just that thumping and the 
back mm-hmm. seat kind of a speaker situation. Right. No, <laughs> he loves and, all that. And, and not only the passion, you can tell he has passion for it, but he also has the knowledge. Yes. He's very knowledgeable in music, mm-hmm. which, you know, I was very impressed by. Like, he knew, you know, the genres. He knew, mm-hmm. like, the beats. He, knew the, he knows, like, all the technical aspects of it. Like, yeah. he knew everything about it, which was cool. And I always told him, like, he's like a, a painter with a limited, you know, paint palette. You know, if you give him all the colors in the world, he could be you know, the next, Mm -hmm. um, you know, Van Gogh or whatever, but like that in in the music world, he just needs a little bit more, you know, opportunity. So I'm really excited for him. No, me too. Me too. Uh, So speaking of all this happiness, um, so Diane and I always like, you know, pick a topic that we want to choose. And uh, this week, Diana decided to choose uh, happiness, the six habits of happy people. And, uh, I mean, did you want to talk about that real quick before I dive into what I want to talk about? or Like why I chose it? Yeah, why you chose happiness, yeah. I think, um, I think we all struggle with, like, how do we be happy? Like, what makes people happy? Um, how do we define it? Or how do we strive to get to a point where we feel happy? And what are some things we can do in, like, our daily routine to, to help promote that more? And um, that's kind of why I think that, mm. you know... Yeah, I'm. A, I feel like I'm a happy person, but even I have days that I'm just like, man, I need to pick me up. Um, and I think it would be great to have some type of um, knowledge and guidance and how to maybe pursue that a little more. Oh, nice. Okay. Do I look weird, by the way? Why? Because I got no glasses. No. Hold on. I'm gonna do what y'all girls do. Get your phone. <laughs> All right. No, because I got no glasses today, y'all. And, I think um, you look more intelligent. People. Oh wow. You should wear glasses more often. I look more intelligent. <laughs> I don't know if that's a compliment. That is a compliment. Okay, it says okay. more intelligent. Say you look, now you look intelligent. I didn't say that. I said you look okay, more right. intelligent. Okay, so more. that could have said that you looked intelligent Hilarious. prior to, but now you look more. Hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so, okay. Um, so, yeah, so happiness. Um, absolute happiness is a state of life in which we can enjoy our existence under any circumstances. So a lot of people talk about, um, and I'm reading from this book, you guys. Um, it's called The Buddha in Your Mirror. It's one of my favorite books. I don't read this book twice already. It's the author. Um, Woody, I don't know how to say his last name. I'm bad with Oxwinder. Okay. Ox, Oxwinder and Martin and Moreno. Probably if they just put that, the Buddha in your mirror, they'll probably bring it up on, like on Amazon or something. Yeah, so the Buddha in your mirror, um, great book. Yeah, I'm um, publicizing it right now. But um, it's a great <laughs> book. Um, you know, Buddhism, you know, it's something that I've studied. You know, Buddhism and Zen, and um, I've always gotten into it, you know, even at a young age uh, for a few years now. And, um, you know, because it's a way of life. I believe in a lot of their principles, and um, I kind of live by a lot of their principles. And that's why, you know, I meditate, and, you know, I do a lot of the things that I do. Um, but, again, it is, a you know, true happiness. A lot of people talk about true happiness, but majority of humans aren't really happy because they're um, bouncing, you know, um, in between what um, the Buddha um, principles call the six lower worlds. Uh, which are, you know, known as the six paths or the six lower worlds. For the vast majority of the human race, life is primarily a matter of bouncing back and forth as in a pinball machine. Amongst these six worlds, one might reasonably ask what's wrong with being in the worlds of humanity and heaven. The problem is that these states don't last. In the lower six paths, we are living primarily in a reaction to external circumstances. In these lower worlds, we are at the mercy of our environment. And this is why I always tell people to get out of your environment, because we really are at the mercy of our environments. Our well-being is contingent on something or someone else. I'm going to say that again. Our well-being is contingent on something or someone else. And a person in the lower world is thus doomed to a roller coaster existence. And, you know, so for the lower the lower six worlds, there's really ten worlds. But, again, for most people, we bounce around in the lower six, which are um, hell, hunger, amality, anger, humanity, and heaven. And we typically bounce, bounce around like, they, like I just read in, you know, within the lower six worlds. Um, so to give, to give you an example, um, I kind of want to read this because it's kind of a day in the life of, you know, how these ten worlds or six lower worlds, I should say, kind of... Uh, make up what we kind of do every day, right? Mm -hmm. So 
to illustrate how these 10 worlds or conditions of life might function within your own sight, let's imagine an ordinary day in a life. You wake up, you get out of bed, perhaps drag a comb across your head, as in the Beatles song. You have your morning coffee, you read the paper. Perhaps you have a Labrador dozing peacefully at your feet. You're in the world of humanity, where one remains in neutral gear. Now you head out into the world, begin your daily commute, and get into a bumper-to-bumper traffic. Immediately, you are cut off and nearly hit by someone vain for incremental advantages. You exchange hostile glances with this inconsiderate person. For flashing instincts, you are in the world of anger. Arriving at work, you find that your immediate supervisor has again taken credit for your best work and again piled your desk with boring, low-prow assignments. Disgusted but lacking the courage to confront authority, you instead snap at your assistant and begin dueling out as many unpleasant tasks to him as you find. You have sunk into the world of animality, where one is easily dominated and in turn seeks to dominate others. The day wears on you and you go to lunch. As usual, you can't help notice individuals you find attractive. Kind of sounds like me, huh? You are not currently seeing anyone. In fact, you are almost giving up the hope of ever meeting the right person. Indeed, this woeful, resigned feeling colors everything you see or do. You are in the world of hunger, where strong, unfulfilled desires destroy your view of reality. Returning to your office, you call a recent flame and ask for a date. This person tells you, however, that the relationship is really over, that you have personal tastes, including your love of modern jazz, that make further contact impossible. Shocked and hurt, you, feel, you begin to feel that you would never be happy, that there is no way out. Your career is a dud. You can't sustain a relationship. Your problems are overwhelming. You are now in the world of hell. Conditions of utmost suffering where even a possibility of achieving some degree of happiness seems impossible. But just at that moment, when all hope seems lost, the telephone rings. It is a professional acquaintance, a very attractive one. I actually have somebody in mind. Calling with an extra ticket to a jazz concert that night, would you care to meet? Instantly, you are in heaven, the world where desires have been fulfilled, a state of relative happiness. Your entire attitude towards the day has changed. The circumstances that put you in hell shrunk in magnitude, and an aura of good fortune surfaces your life. Surfaces your life. But see, that just goes like a whirlwind. Why, but that's a typical day in the life of a person, right? Again, it goes back to saying our well-being is contingent on something or someone, Mm -hmm. right? So we are bouncing around from hell to heaven, but are there things that we can do that can help us, like, get through those days? Like, when I was talking um, yesterday, I believe, how, um, and I did a video about that this morning, about someone asked me, um, is my day getting better, right? Yes. Uh, was I in a, a mood? Was I angry or something? Yes, I was. However, yesterday I kn- or Wednesday? Was it yesterday? Well, that was Wednesday when we went at the show. <sighs> yes. <Wednesday. My> day, <laughs> I've been so busy. Yes. You, no, you're correct. My, my days are off right now. Um, it was Wednesday. Um, <clears throat> but it was Wednesday. And yes, I, I was a little irritated about something. But at the same time, I know my life is great. Oh, you know what it was? Yesterday, I actually had the conversation about that. So that's what it was. So it happened Wednesday, but yesterday I had the conversation. But yes, I know my life is great. Mm -hmm. I have a beautiful life. Mm -hmm. I have an amazing life. I've been very blessed. But I think that's the difference. And we talked about that on the last show. Like, I recognize things. You know, I knew that the next day I was going to be fine. I knew today I was going to be fine. Like, I was excited about today. So it's like. He was all happy. Like, woke me up. Hey, Diana. And I'm just like, uh, do you want? I'm not a morning person. <laughs> no, you know, it is funny because I called Carlos um, early this morning and I just had this. I was like, what's up? What's up? Like I was on the phone. You were, ha- you were yeah, so I was, excited. I was, I, was, I was excited about today because we, we have a great day today. Oh, yeah. Like not only doing this show, but we're shooting another um, uh, episode of us. Uh, not another episode, but we're shooting more stuff for uh, Social Holic later mm-hmm. on. Um, so, yeah, I was excited for today. So when I called him ready this morning, uh, he just laughed at me. And I was like, what's so funny? He was like, because you got this great energy. He was like, but I love it. He was like, I love it. He was like, let's go, let's go. And I was like, well, what are you talking about? <laughs> and, you know, so we just got into it about that. And I was like, dude, you, got, you know me by now. Like, and that's the thing. Like, you and Carlos, so we're working together now, right? So you guys see 
other the, side of the me. The other side of me. Yeah, you <laughs> see the day-to-day, right? Yeah. Like, most people don't see that. So that's why even when I was talking about on our last show, how I say, Mike, how do you, you know, people always saying, how do you keep them together? How are you all, blah, blah, blah. It's like, because they don't see that side yeah. of me. You know what I'm saying? They don't see, um, even like when we went into Raina's um, Wednesday, right? She looked at me and she was like, are you okay? She was like, Oh, you're in work mode. I was like, yeah, when I'm in work mode, I'm focused. I'm serious because I don't want to miss nothing. I don't want to forget anything. No, I so I can't, it. like, play around, even though I want to, but I, I really can't play around. So. You got to learn the duck face. You said duck face? Yeah, you got to learn the duck face. I don't know what, what was that. It's not. That's not what I mean. Oh. Duck face is something that, well, I was a server for a, a, a lot of years. Mm. Um, a thing that we, we live by um, is we're... You look at us and we look like calm, happy, everything's great. But like a duck, right? He's on the lake, serene, right, right. just kind of gliding. But underneath oh, the water, pattern, yeah. it's crazy. Right, right. Shit's going crazy. That's what we've had to, for me, I've had to perfect mm. not only being a server and a bartender and things like that, but also being a, a wedding coordinator, an event coordinator. I cannot show my emotions on my face because if I did, my bride or my client would be like, oh, what's happening? It's falling apart, isn't mm. it? And I can't. I'd be like, oh, my God, everything's perfect. Even though I know, like, half the shit's going wrong and I'm trying to fix it as we're talking and I have everything kind of on cue. But um, there, it's that that facade that it's just everything's great, peaceful, we're great. And I think that's what I've, not to toot my own horn, but I feel like I've really worked hard to perfect that so that even you don't know when I'm falling apart inside, mm-hmm. even, you know, even I think the only person that really gets it or can tell is Mike, right. my husband, because he can read my, my mannerisms. So like if I'm, my feet mm-hmm. is shaking or if I'm moving my hands too much, he'll be like, what's wrong? And I'm like, how do you know? Like, how do you freaking right. know? But I think that because on Wednesday, I, and I told you before, I feed off your energy when we're doing like a shoot or something or even the podcast. So like today and I walked in, he was like, hi, what's up? And I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah, I got this. Yeah, yeah, all right, we're here. And like everything, I just felt energized, right? I feed off of, of mm-hmm. your, so when we went Wednesday, when I walked in, I could just tell, it wasn't like even anything you said, it was your posture. Mm-hmm. You like were very like, and I was like, oh man, what happened? Who pissed you off? And it was kind of like, I had to kind of, grab you and shake you a little bit and was like let's just get right back into mode because whatever happened happened and then that's not gonna hey buddy that's not gonna affect right anything and and i and i know that um and you know and i I really try not to like show my emotions but again you know i'm I'm real i don't like to sugarcoat nothing i don't like to be fake and (laughs) you know something no one pissed me off it's just you know, something didn't go according to plan, and I, I get it. Like yeah, how you said the last time, I, I'm passionate about things, like my work and everything, because you know, it's 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 all me. Yeah. Like I don't, I don't. This is not a nine to five for me, so mm-hmm. I can't just say, you know, fuck it. Like let the CEO of the company or the manager, mm-hmm. or supervisor you take don't over. Clock out. Right. So this is me. If it doesn't work, I mean, and, and we're a team, like you know, but it's still us, right? So. It, shit got to work for and me. And you have to take it seriously. Yeah. I mean, it is a serious. Like, what we do right right now today, I mean, we're trying to motivate and encourage people. But at the same time, like, we're human and we have our, right. our own, you know, setbacks and things that are going on in our own life. Like, we talked about last podcast. Like, we put a smile on, but behind the scenes, like, you know, there's crazy stuff happening, you know taxes and bills and you know life and and just i mean i don't know if you were affected but i was really affected by that shooting at the school recently in texas with all those kids the 14 kids and now to find out the teacher her husband passed away from a heart attack and they're trying to say it's over a broken heart and i can't get my head around like why you know and so all those kind of things happen right we're all affected but yet we still have to come to the table and 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 talk about how we can be happy and how we can promote it. And so mm. we're real people, guys. Like, we really are affected by just anything that's going on in life. And so I think that's where. No, and and you know what? And, and it does affect me, and I'm getting chills right now because, you know, I'm a big advocate for kids, and yeah. I'm about to get emotional because that shit bothers the fuck out of me. That shit was so fucked and, up. And I'm not, I'm not honestly just ready to talk about it yet because I'm still letting it process. Yeah. Um, but you know, like I said, I'm I, I'm a big advocate for kids. I've been working with kids since I was a kid, and 
yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to get into that. That's another show that I do want to talk about, but not right now because I'm still processing and I'm still watching the news, still getting information, you know, about like getting yeah, the, yeah. The, the dad, the dad, that. That's you just found sad, out by man. The other girl. Like, yeah. I mean, it's just sad, but um, crazy world. It's a crazy it is. World. I know when my when Isaac was in, I want to say second or third grade was when the Sandy Hook happened, and he was pretty much the same age as those kids and I went and pulled him out of school like as it was happening and I was reading though I just freaked out and um to relate to it as a mom and and, and I'm sure as a parent your dad it's 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 beyond so but those kind of things right like that's part of the worlds that we deal with right with like as in your book there's so many worlds that we go through and those are that's some tons of emotions there mm. I mean like how do you get through that and be still in your happy state of, of mindset throughout your day um, when those things happen? And, and right. that's out of your control and it may not even affect you personally and, and through your family personally. But it, as a human being, it touches your heart and, it, and it, it makes you think, oh, my God, like you're not given, you're not promised tomorrow. And to love your the people that are there for you and, and that your family and, and all that stuff. And, and um, I think about people that are having kids, you know, pregnant and to think, oh, God, I hope I hope that we can get better in this world. Um, you know, I just gratefully and, and, and welcomed a niece, a new niece mm. to the to the world. And it, I think about that. I'm like, oh, my God, I just want to hold you and protect you and, and not anything bad happen. Um, and so I think we, we all deal with it. So the world's and. and I mean, I loved how you read that book part because it took you through the day of that that guy, I'm assuming. I can totally relate to the driving part. Right, yeah. <laughs> I can't I commute for the life of me. <laughs> um, I drove to Valencia for, like, the first year and a half living out here in the AV, and um, even driving to Valencia, I mean, I'm an aggressive driver. We talked about this on the a podcast earlier, but um, – I can't, I just, I, I need to learn how to be okay with someone cutting me off or doing stupid shit when they drive. Why do I allow them to control my happiness, my mm. emotions? How do I just keep saying, oh, well, that's them, you know, good. You don't know what's going on in there. Maybe they're having a bad day and they're having they're you know, maybe something really bad happened to them and their family and they're just reacting, right? So it's being able to think like that and saying, you know, God, I hope you bless them because something is really wrong, obviously, in their day for them to be that rude or that inconsiderate. No, and, and I honestly used to tell people that all the time. Like when someone cuts you off or done, you know, you don't know what happened. Like, for, yeah. what if their wife just got shot, their child, like yeah. the school shooting? You don't know where they're going. Yeah. So you don't know where they're going. Yeah. Are there assholes in, in the world? Yes. Yeah, they are. But at the same time, Clearly, we don't obviously. know. Right, we don't know. We don't know where these people mm -hmm. are going. So I always try to use that as a, you know, even though I know sometimes people cut me off, it's like, okay, you've been an asshole. Like, cause I've but seen then you I for miles. I think I'm probably doing the but, same thing. If I'm in a rush and I'm in a hurry and I'm doing, I'm probably cut off a lot of people and I'm mm -hmm. sorry if, it was, if I know you. <laughs> but you know what, when I do it though, but here's the difference though, when I do it, it's not intentionally like I catch myself and I'm always like, oh, my bad. Sorry. When people don't do that, yeah. like I really try to say, OK, well, you know what? I'm not going to say you're an asshole because I don't really know where you're going, even though I kind of know you're an asshole. But I don't know where you're going. So I'm going to give you the benefit of doubt and assume you're going somewhere in a rush to help one of your family members. And that's what used to just kind of help me. Um, that's a good idea to try yeah. to like just have that in your mind. Like right. something might have happened. And, and I, that's what I'm like. It's, I really want to work on that part of mm. me where even if like, I am in the grocery store, which I, I'm also an aggressive shopping cart driver. So, <laughs> Oh my God, I know. This, is, this is horrible, Diane. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so like, I hate, like if I'm trying to get down an aisle and someone's just like, huh, do I want that box? Or do I want like step back, let the people that know what they want, let them grab me, you know, whatever. Anyways. So I really want to work on that as well. Thinking that if someone's having a bad day and cuts me off in the grocery line or whatever, like to have that compassion to be like, you know, I hope you have a great day. Like, I, I just said a prayer for you. I hope everything's okay because, you know, I feel like, you know, you, you need that. And maybe that might change someone's day. Mm -hmm. And that's another thing, like speaking positive things to people, right? It's a thing that Gabby, my friend Gabby from the Modern Tea Room, I love, I hope you feel better. Um, she's instilled in me recently going to the gym. And um, 
there'll be a really pretty girl working out. And I'm like, oh, she's so pretty. And she's like, go tell her. And I'm like, huh? Go and tell her. Go tell her. We don't do that enough. Women don't do that to women enough. Empower another woman. Go tell her. And I'll like, okay, this is weird. So I get my ass up off my machine or whatever I'm doing. And I'm like, hey, I just want to tell you, I think you're really beautiful. Like, just wanted to tell you that. I hope you have a great day. And mm-hmm. the girl, like, it's amazing what the smile that it brings to this girl's face, like, lights right. up their world. And I think that's something that I value Gabby for and, and other women that are like that, like, that want to empower other women out of the blue. Anywhere you just walk in, like, oh, my God, that shirt is really, like, that really is a great color on you. Like, you look, you're glowing, you look beautiful. I hope you have a great day. There, That should be, we need to... Um, promote that more we need to do that more Mm -hmm. um and speaking positive things into people so yeah and and so i mean just going into that i mean it really goes into the subject you pick um i know you you picked the six habits of happy people right but there's a lot of habits i mean i've been reading about this ever since you said it earlier you know there i'm reading something right now where someone wrote 10 10 habits of Mm -hmm. happy people i saw one where someone wrote 32 habits you know so there's a lot of them but we just kind of going to touch on just the six right here and and but you know why though i said six because Mm -hmm. i feel like if you give too big of a number or too many ways of doing something, it can be overwhelming for a simple person that's mm-hmm. a maybe so busy with their daily routine of kids. And, you know, they I, at one point I had a, a kid in elementary, middle school, and high school. Mm-hmm. So driving them to school was already a full-time job. And then plus picking them up and then working and then grocery shopping and paying bills and uh, if you're married. And all, so there's so much in your day already to have like 32 Things I can do, like, right, oh, my yeah. God. So give me six. Yeah. Give me, you know, give me six. I think six I can do, you know. And then maybe, you know, in, in 21 days, I love that 21-day challenge and routine and, and creating that. Maybe add another six once I I master those six. So that's kind of why I said and that. That's, <laughs> and that's key. And that goes back to, you know, what I, what, what I try to teach people is, like, you know, do something for 21 days because it really does take 21 days to form a habit, right? So even, like, with these six um, habits of happy people, you know, the first one is don't show off, talk less, learn daily, help less fortunate, laugh more, and ignore nonsense, right? So even if you take those six and you practice practice them on a daily basis, you know, after 21 days, and then you, and then after that 21 days, guess what? Go do it for another 21 days. Mm-hmm. Pretty soon, everything becomes a habit. Right. So, like, even for, like, the um, traffic thing with me, I'm so patient in traffic. Like, it doesn't bother me no more. It's People awesome. that drive with me, they be like, oh, wow, like, you're just so calm. they like, it's, it's, it's crazy. Like, it doesn't bother me no more. Traffic does not How bother long, me. Like, when do you think that became, when do you think you became more calm driving? Like, in your 30s, 40s? Oh, like, give me re- some hope. Just, just, just recently, <laughs> just recently. Give me some hope. I was not like this uh, five years ago. Okay, <laughs> I, okay. I was like you cussing people out. Okay, no, okay. But yeah. <laughs> I mean, but that just goes to the older we get, you know, um, we realize we, it's not that we, serious. We realize a lot. We, But that just shows a sign of growth. You know, I was listening to my friend's podcast, the one I was telling you about, yes. right? I was listening to one of her episodes today, and her and her uh, co-host was talking about uh, relationships, wives, not wives, but relationships, marriage, and um, something else. And um, they were just saying, like, her co-host hasn't dated in 10 years, right? Um, and she said it, a lot has changed. But it, it shows, like, her. It was she was showing her growth. Yeah, you're not the same person you was 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. And if you was, guess what? We got a problem. Yeah. If you are the same person you was last year, we have a problem. Mm-hmm. You're supposed to grow every day, really. Yeah. So you should not be the same person you was last year, 10 years ago, even right. six months ago. Like, if so, we really need to have a conversation. <laughs> <laughs> we need more you than know? just a podcast. Yeah, so it's, it's you know, you, you do these things and, and you grow. Um, and for me, yeah, the, the patience thing, I think, honestly... Over the last um, three years that I've been single now, it has taught me a lot of patience because I was so impatient um, with, like, people was like, oh, you know, you just got a relationship. You need to wait, you know, a year, two years before you date again. And I was like, what? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, where you read that at? Like, yeah. I'm not about to sit around here for a year and not date. <laughs> but it taught me, but time went by and it taught me patience. Yeah. And, and with a lot of things in my life, with traffic, with, you know, I read now. No, well, I've been reading for maybe about four or five years now, and I love it. Like, before, I used to do audio books, mm-hmm. but now I actually love picking up a book, 
you know, sitting in my corner of my office on my couch, and I love to read. I love books. Um, audio books is something I'm trying to get into mm-hmm. because I'm so busy now that I don't have the wonderful opportunity that I, I get. I would love to be able to sit down and read and, and stuff like that. Um, but audio books is what I'm trying to get into. So it's funny that we're opposite now because I used to, I, I miss reading. I used to read all the time. But you know what? So I'm going to tell you the, the, the main factor that really helped me, meditation. And there's a lot of forms of meditation, but sitting, um, I have a meditation room in my house. And uh, sitting still for 10 minutes. And a lot of people think, well, I can't sit there for a whole hour. It's like, no, you just do it for 10 minutes. And just, I worked on um, breathing techniques mm-hmm. and just listening to my breath. And now I can do it for 10, 15, 20 minutes. And it, but it took me maybe, I want to say nine, six to nine months to really get it. So the first couple of times, like, I failed at it. You like know. your mind is still racing. Yeah, because you're supposed to um, count to 10 and don't focus. Like, you're supposed to uh, breathe, like, breathe in one and breathe out two. And you're supposed to do that after 10. Most people won't make it past two. And I talked about this at the event that, you know, I mm-hmm. did uh, when I did my motivational speaking for you. Um, most people, like, for instance, if you never read a book before, you're not going to get past the first, the second page. Right. Because your mind is going to go somewhere. You're going to get antsy. Mm-hmm. You're not going to be able to sit down there. Right. Same with meditation. If you never meditated before, you're not going to get past 20 seconds, 30 seconds. Yeah. Like you're going to be already tired for for you to sit there to try to do it for 10 minutes, you know. So it took me like six to nine months to actually like really get it. And that helped me with patience, because when you start meditating and just focusing on your breath, it really teaches you patience. Like when things happen, matter of fact, Wednesday, <laughs> you know, how I was telling you, uh, Carlos and I stood behind and was in the parking lot, you know, yeah. kind of going over notes. It was this big boom. We don't know where it came from. Oh, the, the sonic boom. Yeah. It, I don't think it was a sonic boom. Cause I've heard a sonic boom, but it was very similar to a it sonic boom. It shook a lot. Yeah. yeah. And I just stood there and I was still having a conversation and Carlos looked at me. He was like, dude, <laughs> like you're just standing there. Like, it's so mm-hmm. calm. And he's panicking. He's like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> I gotta go. I gotta go. <laughs> and I was like, I don't see nothing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I heard it. I don't see nothing. No one's running around. I don't see no fires or anything. So I'm cool. Like mm-hmm. I was, you know, I was, I was just taught that when something happens, don't panic. Like figure out what's going on first. Yeah, because if you just panic, you might be running into something you don't mm-hmm. want to run into. That's so, what happened at me at the <clears throat> festival. Right, so I didn't want to like. I was like, "Why are we going crazy right now?" Hold on a second. Yeah, so, so that's how Carlos was Wednesday. Yeah. <laughs> What's up, Carlos? He's not wearing us again today, but <laughs> I'm, I'm telling your business. But yeah, he was panicking. He was just looking around. It looked like he was sweating too. And he's like, "Dude, how are you just standing there?" <laughs> I like, get so official because he gets animated. <laughs> yeah, he does. He's like, he gets dude, really he was. Dude. He was like, "Are you just standing there?" He was like, "You really just standing there right now? You didn't hear that? Did you not just hear that?" And I was like, I "Yeah, totally I heard it." <laughs> but I was like, "Do you?" see anything he was like no but that makes me nervous he's like i don't know what to do. it was funny <laughs> like what's coming now yeah <laughs> what's I, was happening like, after? I was like no, i heard and i was like oh my god that was a really big sonic boom i was and like my whole dude, house shook you do know there's a, a military base so i knew that it's a military mm-hmm. like they got like two airports or something out here and they always fly the Edwards doing Air Force something. Base, yeah. yeah so i was like it was probably bleeding so i was like i'm not worried mm-hmm. so yeah so meditation definitely helped me like do I'm you just, do the cracking the egg over your head and filling it with all your Negative thoughts, too? Is that part of your meditation? No, I've never even heard of that. What? What? Yeah, I've never heard of that. It's like a huge thing in the meditation world where, like, you get an egg and you just hold it or something and you talk about all the negative, like, whatever bad, you know, this happened, that happened, mm-hmm. and then you basically transfer that negative energy into the egg, and then you're supposed to crack it over your head and let the negative just spill out, and mm-hmm. then you meditate. This is a friend of mine told me about it, and I was like... No. Uh, I can't do that. I don't want egg yolk in my hair. <laughs> no, I've, I've never, never done that. Um, besides, so I had three techniques. I had meditation. I have these mala beads, um, which mm. are prayer beads. Um, and if you know anything about mala beads and prayer beads, there, there are 108 beads on a string. And um, I used to do this a lot too. And this helped me with my patience driving. So you're supposed to hold the beads a certain way. Um, and then 
for every B, and I forgot what the 108 symbolizes. I have to look it up again. But it symbolized, the number symbolizes something. You're supposed to say something positive, so 108 times. So, for oh, instance, yeah. just saying, like, today's going to be a great day. I'll say that 100 times. You're supposed to flip it. You're not supposed to touch it with this finger. Um, and then you're supposed to flip it and do it and say something else for 108 times. Um, and I used to do that during traffic. And that kind of like calmed my nerves and just relaxed me. So it's another form of meditation. So that really wow. helped me. And I used to do that all the time. I took my bottle of bees with me all the time. And I'd just say 108 positive things. Holy cow. Yeah. So, I mean, it works. Um, but that's one of the things. Um, what do you think? So on the six habits of, of happy people, what do you think don't show off means? I don't know. That, I was actually just about to go to that. <laughs> like, don't show off. Don't. I kind of. I kind of know what it means. Um, like, be grateful for your blessings, but don't put it, rub it in the face of others that may be. And you know what? And, and, and you know what? I'm going to talk about this, and I wasn't going to talk about it. So I have this mentor of mine. He's a little mentor of mine. He's a real good friend of mine. But I'm not talking to him right now, and I don't know if he's <laughs> going to listen to this. But, oh, well, it is what it is. Um, but <clears throat> Hey, this is he, getting out truth. No, it, it is. And one day I'll have a conversation with him about it, but... I really admire him and respect him for what, like, what he does. But for me, and this is just my opinion, and we talked about opinions. Opinions don't mean shit. So I know mine don't mean shit to a lot of people. <laughs> but it's okay. I can still say what I want. Um, he very wealthy. Very wealthy guy. And he gives people, like, um, he don't give financial advice, but he wants people to do what he does, right? And he shows off a lot of his stuff, like his cars, how much, like, he goes out during Christmas time and just, he hands out $100 bills, like, mm -hmm. which is great. I love that, right? But for me, his whole thing is he always says he's teaching people mindset, right? But if you go to on his Facebook page or any other social media page that he has, he's always preaching money. Mm -hmm. Like, don't work. Like, invest in this, invest in that. But he's not really telling you to invest. That's his thing. Like he's not telling you to invest, but in a in, in, in a sort of way, he's kind of mind. Yeah. yeah, he's mind fucking you. Mm -hmm. And to be honest with you, that's what he told me he does. Mm. He actually told me that one day. He's like, Mike, I just mind fuck people. I'm like, okay, cool. You can do that, but I'm not going to do that. Yeah. Like, I don't believe in that. And it's great. You, you've been very blessed in your life, but every post is always about money, about how many cars you got, about all this and that. And it's like, dude, if you're talking about mindset and you really truly want to help people, why are you always shoving all this stuff down their throat? Mm -hmm. Like, and that's literally what he does. And I don't like that because everybody can't be like, pe we all have our own unique gift, yeah. our own unique path. So every, everybody's path is not like that. So if, if you're teaching all these people to do all this stuff, you're actually hurting more people than you're helping. Cause now you got all these people following you and they're blinded by all the stuff you have thinking that they're going to have that. Yeah. And if that's not in their path, you're going to hurt them mm -hmm. financially, literally. Yeah. And I don't like that. And so I stopped, like, I, I still kind of follow him, but I really don't follow what he does. Because, again, I have mentors that I don't agree with everything they do. Again, great guy. I love the guy. But I just, I just don't follow that aspect yeah. of what he's teaching. Because to me, it's just wrong. And I'm not really trying to hurt nobody. Like, because I know everybody has their own unique path. Mm -hmm. And you shouldn't shove it down their throat. If you want to show people what you got, great. Say, you know, yeah, this is what I'm doing. You don't have to do it, but to me, every post that he does, it's all about that, and he shoves it down their throat, and it's yeah. like, to me, that's wrong. So I, that's what I believe don't show off means. Yeah, I agree. I agree not not to be too flashy, and, and I think that's a great, you, you hit it with exactly what you said, so. Yeah, but, you know, I mean, he, he comes from the multi-level marketing era, and he's an older guy, and that's just the way, like, and I don't think he does it intentionally with any no. malice, right? That's just the way he is. And yeah, I mean, it's probably like more of a hustler mentality. Yeah, it is. Anything. It is, and, you know, I can respect that. Like, mm -hmm. I, I don't knock nobody's hustle. I don't knock anybody's hustle, you know, because um, I've never had a 9 to 5, and I've hustled. Even when I was younger, I've done things I'm not proud of today, but I, I, I've hustled and got my way out of it. Yeah. So I don't knock nobody's hustle. Um, it's just I don't have to follow it, and I don't have to like it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so that's what that means to me. Um, talk less. I think that it's missing a little part to it. I think it should say listen more, talk less. Mm -hmm. um, I think because if you truly listen to anything, people talking, the sounds of nature, um, and, and talk less, you can learn 
so much, which I think goes into the next one, learn daily. I think those two are kind of simultaneous, simultaneously. See, I have the worst problem pronouncing the words. Um, really go hand in hand together because I do, and I, I know you're the same way. You can learn something every day. What they say um, when you talk, you're actually speaking from experience, things mm -hmm. you already know. When you listen, you're actually learning something. Mm -hmm. Right. When I first read that somewhere, I was like, wow, that is so true. Mm -hmm. And that's why I always say I'm a great listener. Like I always listen to people like I never want to be the smartest person in the room. Mm -mm. That's why I love hanging around you and like the, your uh, circle of people, because I don't feel like I'm the uh, smartest person in the room and I'm learning from you guys. Right. So I, I love that. Yeah. I always try to talk. less. I know I talk a lot, but <laughs> I really listen more. I'm learning that with doing the podcast with you and doing the social hog TV. Um, like when I interviewed Andreas and Reina is learning to, to shut the fuck up because I'm, I don't want to miss moments. Mm -hmm. Um, and I noticed that, you know, when I, I used to, I feel like I'm always preparing my answer for the question versus listening. Like I'm always preparing for the next question or what I'm going to say to you. I'm listening to you. I, I am listening to you, but my mind can do two things at once. I right. feel or like I multitask. So I'm listening to you, but I'm also saying, okay, I'm going to say this next. Instead of just pop, like letting me listen right. and, and going natural from there, not having like some kind of a plan. Mm -hmm. And so I'm learning that doing social health. But that's, that's not a bad thing because I do that. It's called fast forward thinking, mm -hmm. right? I do that in business a lot, right? I'm always thinking ahead of, ahead of things. And from what, by you being an entrepreneur, that's a great, um, yeah. um, what I know it's a trait? skill, yeah. but I wish I could turn it off. Sometimes, Sometimes right. when someone's talking to me and like, I feel like, and, and I, and this is why I'm so happy to be doing social health TV is that people want to talk about their story. And they do. And it's like a, a live biography. Um, and I don't want to ever cut someone off in the middle of their story that they feel is important to tell to the world and to get off their chest or whatever mm -hmm. the situation is. So I'm really trying to learn how to talk less um, and hear people because mm -hmm. I'm a quick thinker. I'm a quick talker. I'm always moving fast, 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 fast. Like you said, fast forward thinking. Um, I don't know how to slow down. And I think that's what I want to work on is right. slowing down. So, so help less fortunate. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, that can be interpreted in so many ways. It's not just, you know, handing out a couple dollars to mm -hmm. the guy on the side of the freeway um, when you're stopped at the stoplight. I think, I think that's, it's a huge, it's huge. It could be helping those that are new in business, mm -hmm. you know, um, some, a family that is struggling. Um, I hate the whole, like, oh, help people at Christmas time, like, and Thanksgiving. Like, what about the rest of the year? Yeah. Um, you know, and and that goes back to um, me talking about my mentor. Like, yeah, it's great that he does it, you know, during Christmas and, you know, whatever. But I do it all year round. Mm -hmm. Like, honestly, whenever, it's very rare that I have, like, dollar bills or anything in my pocket because I always use my card, right? But whenever I do, for whatever reason, have dollar bills, I always put it um, in my center compartment of my car. Don't nobody break in my car. It's only like <laughs> no, $4. Dollars. You just. <laughs> uh, but, you know, like, yeah, it's not like a couple hundred dollars where y'all going to get rich off of So don't do that. Um, <laughs> but I always, like, whenever I do find myself to have a couple bucks, I put it there. So whenever I'm at, you know, the off ramps or the mm -hmm. freeways, I always hand those out to the homeless people that be standing on the corners or, you know, I'm on the freeway. So I always do that. And I do, do you feel that. God talks to you? Yeah, and you know what's crazy is because I don't give it to all of them. Exactly. I, I feel like when I have this overwhelming feeling of, like, give him or give her yes. something is when I do it. Exactly. Um, because I, and I've been burnt, and unfortunately, you mm -hmm. know, like, there's good and bad people. Um, but I let, the, I let God, and I'm, you know, I'm Christian-based. I'm a huge believer in the Lord and God, and I think that I don't, I'm not doing anything out of my own. It, this is mm -hmm. all God, you know, blessing me. But I listen to it, that overwhelmingly gut instinct or whatever you want to call it to help somebody and when I get that feeling and I had this feeling recently at Costco mm -hmm. this guy came up to me that I was couldn't put my groceries away and he's like I'll help you and I was like 
you know, I'm okay, and, I, and I'm really cautious because, you know, I'm a woman, right. and out in Costco in the parking lot, and I get a little bit nervous, and he starts putting my stuff in the trunk, and he's, and then I'm like, thank you. He's like, I'll put the card away, and I was like, okay. He's like, I'm really hungry. He's like, if you have anything, and I was like, oh, my God, like, I, I don't, like, I'm so sorry, like, I, I don't, like, but I had this, like, feeling, so, like, I literally went into my purse, and, like, at the bottom, I always have change, so I went and got, like, three dollars of quarters, and I wanted to give it to him, so I, I went back to try to find him, and this guy was, like, yelling at him, and he was, like, he's, like, does your wife know you're out here? He's like, you need to come with me. We're going to go home. He's like, you shouldn't be out here doing this. Come on. Does your wife mm -hmm. know you're here? Mm -hmm. And so then I was like, <gasps> like, what's going on? Like, right. you know, is, is everything. So I was like, I didn't get to, to give him the money, but I'm, that stuck with me because I felt this overwhelming feeling of wanting to give him something, and I couldn't. Mm -hmm. And I thought, like, Lord, I tried. I'm sorry. Like, I failed, but I no. don't know what that situation was. Right, and, and you don't know, and and I get those same feelings um, when I want to, you know, it's that gut feeling. Yeah. It's that for me, it's energy. Like you know, I feel energy all the time, and because there was, was an instance where at that same Costco, I actually um, saw a guy that was standing right there off Tenth Street, and I was at the light, and I saw him with a sign. But then when the light turned green, he crossed the street and got into a nice car and drove off. And yeah. I pulled over to watch him do this. I was like, oh, my God. And I've mm -hmm. never given him money. So I was like, okay, well, see, now I know not to give you no money. Mm -hmm. Like, There's you're a taking family, advantage. too. There's a family that does it. Yeah, and it's, it's just and unfortunate. And, like, it's sad to see the kids out there. You're yeah. teaching your kids this. Like, Dad, I hate to say I that, can't yeah. do that, you know. But anyways, yeah, so help so less yeah. fortunate. Help less, yeah. Um, laugh more. Um, that's, that's one of the things where, you know, I know Carlos wants us to, us to be more open and vulnerable and all that. But, you know, I was also told him, like, the reason why I like him on the show, you know, he brings that aspect. Humor. Humor, the comic comic aspect to it. Because, you know, yeah, I, I want to. <laughs> he's a clown. I'm just kidding. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk to people, all right? And I want to help people. And I want people to have these conversations and open up. But at the same time, um, like my sister, she asked me, like, you know, when I was telling her about the podcast, she was like, what are y'all going to talk about? I said, we're going to talk about everything. I said, I'll talk about anything just as long as the end of the conversation, it has a purpose and some type of meeting and you have a takeaway and it. it makes your day just a little bit better. Right. Not all the way better, but if you can take get a takeaway from something that we mm -hmm. talked about. Relating your, to it. Right. You something. Made your day just a little bit better. I'm cool with that. I want people to walk away thinking, I'm not alone. Right. They're just like me. We have similar thoughts. I can relate to that person. Mm -hmm. I want to be their friend. Um, where are they? Let's find them. Like, I want to follow them more. That's what I want people to take away from this, to know that, you know, and I'm, I said this before, you matter, you're relatable, you're important. We have similar, you know, feelings. And even if you don't agree with some of the things we said, we want to know that too. Like, right. well, why? And and maybe we can learn something from what you're saying. And I know we put the number out before and how people can call in. And that's a real thing. Like, I would love to have a random person that I've never met before from, you know, Rhode Island, I don't know, call us one of these days and say, hey, I want to be on your show. And we put you on the show and we talk about it. And maybe there's a difference. I mean, you are your environment, right? You're, mm -hmm. We're over here in California. Well, how's out, out there? And, you know, I don't know. My son just came from South Dakota. Completely different lifestyle, right? There's so much to learn about other people, which is amazing. And I'd love that to take away from a relatable, but also to have humor and comedy and, yeah. and lightheartedness, like, that's I think that's great. And yes, we do miss you, Carlos. You need to be our, our third person. Our three musketeers is is not the same. So <laughs> I'm serious. We're the three musketeers. We're the threes not company, yet. whatever you want to call it. We have a good time. Um, we all bring something to this podcast. No, absolutely. And um, he's he's probably going to be on the next one. Um, he's just do busy doing work. He's actually. What time is it? Yeah. So in about another hour, he's heading out this way because uh, we have some social holic stuff to do. Um, but, you know, Carlos doesn't live close to us. So, you know, um, he lives in the valley. So mm -hmm. for uh, Diane and I, it's easier, easier for us to just get on and do a show, you know, so we can continue to talk to you guys and give you guys, you know, all this great energy. And it's so exciting. We have some really awesome news that we are not talking about yet, but it's going to be happening in July, hopefully. So, okay. 
So, uh, but let's get let's let's finish this last one. Um, ignore nonsense. Mm-hmm. Ignore nonsense, and that that goes back to opinion opinions. Yeah, <laughs> no, for real, <laughs> yeah. it is. And you know, it's funny because I was listening to the last show, and I was like, wow, you know. Yeah, I don't sugarcoat nothing, right? But I, w- I do want people to know, because I've had people over the last couple of days, like I sent you that text earlier where someone yeah. said, hey, I listened to your show, great show. Like, I love stuff like that, right? Mm-hmm. But that's positive stuff. It's like, it's okay. I don't like negative opinions. Like, people say, oh, you should do this, you shouldn't do that. And like, I feel like, like, don't give me that. Like, I respect everybody's opinion, because everybody has one. But to me, really, opinions don't have no value. Yeah. Like if you're not coming to me, you know, like uplifting me and mm-hmm. being positive, then I don't want to hear it. Like, right. because again, it, that, that can ruin someone's career. You can um, derail somebody. Yeah. People can get depressed over any little thing you say nowadays. And yeah. that's why I, I say again, like, don't give your opinion. Like if you don't have what they used to say, if your mama used to say, if you don't have nothing nice, don't say nothing at all. Yeah. Like for real. <laughs> Because people nowadays are Unless sensitive. I ask you, like, can yeah. you please give me the the dirty truth? Like, yes, did you like it? No, you didn't. Or what could I work on? But if I don't ask you and you just feel like, you know, the need to say something, say something nice. Right. You know, and word it. If you do have something that's constructive, word it in a way like, what's that compliment sandwich? I like the compliment sandwich. Tell mm-hmm. me something nice. Tell me something to work on. Tell me something nice. I need that because right. I don't want to leave like, oh. You because know, people, I mean, so ignore nonsense. People, there's so many talented people in the world, right? And like, even for me, um, you can accomplish anything you want to. Mm-hmm. I truly believe everybody has a unique gift, but I believe people are trying to walk other people's paths and yes. they not walk in their own paths. And it goes back mm-hmm. to what I was saying about my, my mentor and him doing what he do. It's like, let people walk their own path. I Every, think it's a fear of jumping, right? Like it is. People see their friends doing something mm-hmm. that, and I just had a conversation with a friend, and I hope this they don't mind. Nothing personal with me, but they had a friend who does something, and their friend is now copying what they do exactly right. to the T. And it, that is, and I had to give advice. I said, well, first I would talk to my friend in person, and I would never put anything negative in writing. And I also just share like, hey, you know, like I think you're so talented as well, but I think we're both – you know, we should have something unique about our, our talents that are similar and not to copy each other. Right. Um, and, and, but also it puts fire under your butt to, if you're a trendsetter and if you're, you know, someone that people follow, you're, you know, an influencer that just puts fire under your belt, under your butt to do something different now. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, what you did is great. It caused, you know, some motion. People are now copying you. So now you need to do something different and and keep moving keep growing so um the nonsense ignore the nonsense that goes for you know negative opinions it goes for uh you know copycats it goes for anyone trying to bring you down stop you from doing what you do um i love that you have the one life that is one life you have one life to live so ignore it pursue your what you want to do create your happiness right and, you know, again, you know, everybody has their own unique gift. Mm-hmm. Walk your true path. and But like like you just said, a lot of people are walking other people's yeah. paths. And that's one thing I'm trying to, you know, tell people. And that's why with my One Life brand, it's like take off that mask. Mm-hmm. Live, your, live your life today because you're not promised tomorrow, you know. Um, the right people will accept you mm-hmm. and love you when you show who you really are. You have people. It may not be the people that you think need to be in your world but that's okay right. like i'm strange i'm weird i'm awkward i'm you know and it took me years to figure out that i need to be me and i'm now and i'm not perfected it i'm still i still get you know embarrassed i still get uh nervous going into f- places i don't know people um but i realize that the right people that need to be in my life will flock to me when i'm myself mm-hmm. and those people end up being amazing and I feel good about myself that I can be me and it's just changed my world. So, um, yeah, I love that. No. Yeah. I mean, for me as well, um, I, I've done so much in my life. Um, everybody has a bucket list, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I actually have a, a record out that I recorded, um, during a pandemic. That's right. Tell me so 
And, you know, because I grew up in the music industry and then I went over to TV. But, you know, for me, I've always wanted to do a record. But I just didn't know what, because I don't sing, I don't rap, like, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, good at career. Okay at karaoke. Okay. But uh, <laughs> okay. I've always just wanted my own record. Like, that was just something I wanted, right? Yeah. Um, so during the pandemic, I made a record. And, and the crazy thing about it is, like I was saying on the last show, I know so many, like, musicians mm -hmm. and, like, artists, like, that I grew up with. Like, I know so many people that got million-dollar record deals and production deals yeah, and music. You show them or ask them nothing. I didn't ask them shit. That's good, though. I still to this day didn't even tell a lot of people like because I did it for me. Yeah, I didn't listen to nobody. I ignored the nonsense. And how, do you feel fulfilled? Oh, absolutely, hundred percent. All that matters. I did it for me, and I don't even look at the status of it. I know I sold like a few records, but I don't even look at it because it's yeah. one. It's not my passion. I, I'm not gonna say not my passion, but it's not my career or something that I yeah. wanted to make a million records so I can make a million You're not dollars. Pursuing right? it it's as not you pursuing it. Right. Yeah. Right. It's just something I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And I didn't I ignored people and I just did it. That's awesome. So you just never know what you can accomplish in life. You can't listen to people. I mean unless they're giving you constructive criticism, you know, positive and trying to uplift you uplift you, then yeah, listen to them. But all that nonsense, mm -hmm. like go live your life because you only have one. Yeah. Totally agree. This was amazing. So, yeah, as Diana was saying, you know, we definitely have a number for you guys to call 747-999-8021. Again, 747-999-8021. Um, you can reach me at IG at One Life Brand. Uh, reach Diana at Socialholic TV. Um, Let us know. We'd love to talk to you. Um, I think I just want to hear everybody. I mean, they be just so amazing to hear everybody's perspective on right. on life. So I think I think in the next couple of uh, shows, we definitely gonna have some callers on here and like really get into conversations. I know Raina wants to come on here yes. after we just did a show with her. Uh, she says she has more to talk about. She has a lot of stories. Andreas um, and Raina, and we've got and some. We got to do a part two people. of Barbara because Barbara has such a oh, long yeah. story. So I mean, we're gonna start bringing more people on. It's just the last couple of shows it was just Diane and I. Um, and, I'm not, and because we've been busy and you know, like we're filming and you know just trying to schedule everybody, but. We're going to get it, and uh, well, but I want to know what what's this uh, surprise or secret you're talking about? Just, oh, okay. You want to talk about that or? Next time. Next time, okay. Let me talk about that next time. All right. <laughs> yes, we are, we are, we are on, on time. Yes, we are on time, but... Um, <laughs> We want to thank you guys for listening. Uh, thanks again for all the positive feedback that you guys have been giving us. We truly, truly appreciate it. Uh, thanks to everybody out in the AV again that's been you know, opening arms to me, welcoming me into this community. I love it. I'm having an amazing time meeting some incredible people. I appreciate each and every one of you. Um, thank you, Diana, as always. And we're going to have a great night tonight because yes, we're we about are. to go get ready and shoot for Socialholic. Um, I think this is the last piece for the first episode. Yes. And... We're going to Don South tonight. Yes. Shout out to Don South for letting us uh, shoot there Chris. tonight. Um, we're going to have an amazing time tonight. Um, Gabby, I hope you're feeling well because I know she was supposed to be a part of it, but yeah. she's out ill right now. So I'm going to be it? putting what I learned from Raina at Fusion Movement Dance Company on the dance floor. Yeah, we're going to have an amazing time. I so, need my two uh, left feet. <laughs> All right, we are out of here. We are back in the elevator. Um, oh, you know what? Did we do the elevator? Did we even go up to the elevator? We didn't go up the elevator. You have to add that in there. That's all right. We was at the top floor, y'all, but now we're going back down the block. We, we are out of here. We the helicopter to the top floor that today. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't go up the elevator. Um, all right, thanks, you guys. See you guys next time. See ya.